dear friends and colleagues. Today, we are going to discuss one of the cornerstones of teaching children, work with parents. This. It comes as no surprise that they, the parents, influence your students significantly so they can boost the progress or just ruin all your hard work. So let us see what we can do to make your interaction productive and positive. The first and the most important thing, you need to set communication with parents in advance. We need to talk. And make sure that they do not force the child. What? What? Children don't know what they want. Parents know everything better. The truth is that parents can spark the interest and encourage kids, which means voluntarily will to study and learn, while coercion may lead to several unpleasant effects. We, we don't want that. What are those effects? It destroys motivation, creates toxic memories, and prevents kids from getting carried away with learning. And of course, it would lower their self-esteem and they would go to see a psychiatrist later on. So, if parents of your students force their children, let them know about the possible negative consequences. At best, they will come back soon with a fascinated child. The second important point is to keep in touch with the parents. If you work with a group, conduct regular parents' meetings, let's say at least once a month. If you work individually, drop parents a line after each lesson and be always ready to talk with them. Provide the parents with the relevant information. Be honest and tell about both successes and failures. But remember to remind them not to take it dramatically. Seriously, yes, but not dramatically. None of the failures in English learning that kids face is worth spoiled relationships with parents. Give them, the parents, recommendations on how to help the child with the homework, which skills to practice and on which material to focus. When you ask them to help with the homework, it can be as simple as reminding their children that they have homework and making sure that children have time to do the homework in a certain day, not two hours before the lesson. It might be a great idea to create a simple form which you can fill in after each lesson and send to the parents. What we talked about, how was the discipline, uh, what about homework and all those points in there. Such communication benefits both of you and parents and saves plenty of nerves. Relax. One of the most common and serious problems is when the parents do not know English but desperately want their kids to learn it. Learn English. Initially, that is not really good. They need to learn it as well. And helping their children is uh, the way for parents to improve their own basic English. Talk with the young learner and discuss lesson materials. Sharing and telling others, well, the parents, about what you have just learned is probably the best way to memorize this information. And for the parents, it's a great chance to actually learn something new and learn what you guys talk about during the lessons. You can encourage parents to play simple games, for example, different card games or bingo games on the vocabulary of your lesson together. So your students teach their parents in a way which will help them, the students, to remember things and which will help parents to see what you guys have been doing throughout the lessons. And of course, the parents would see the progress of their children because every time the vocabulary is new, the rules are different and so on. When you give the feedback to the parents about their child's performance, don't forget that the feedback you give has to satisfy certain criteria. First of all, it has to be timely. So do not give the feedback about something that happened like a month ago. Just give it straight away so they know what to focus on and how to change the situation if that's needed. The feedback has to be specific about their child, about their performance during your lessons. Don't just say, well, the group is doing great. We cover everything. The atmosphere is amazing. That's all good. But the parents do not care much about the group. They care about their child. So be specific and do not forget that the feedback should cover not only overall performance, but different aspects of the English language that you're teaching and tell your parents what's going great what's not so great and when you're giving feedback do not forget to say what to work on and how to improve how to change the situation in, in case the feedback is negative we need hope we need change and when you're giving negative feedback do not forget to mention what the parents should do to improve 
this uh, to change the situation, to make sure this does not happen again, or depending on the situation. Previously, everybody thought that the feedback sandwich, positive, negative, positive, is a good way to wrap up everything and to structure the communication with parents based on that model. Uh, it sounds okay, but most of the people know this, and they're just waiting for the negative feedback. The positive feedback flies away, they don't pay attention to that, they're getting ready to receive negative feedback, they get stressed, and the students would get stressed after that. If you're having positive feedback, just make it positive. Positive feedback is okay. When the feedback is negative, that happens, don't forget to give the recommendations straight away. Like, what should everybody do? What should the student do? What should the parents do? And what should we all together do to help this situation? Sounds good. So, summing up, talking to parents is important. Don't be too annoying and don't forget about their existence. And this is it for today. We would highly appreciate if you leave some comments about the problems you face with the parents and how you dealt with them. And also, if we missed something, let us know in the comment section as well. And if you haven't joined the team of Skyeng teachers yet, do it. The link is in the description. Click on it and start teaching English from any part of the world. Good luck to you, your students, and uh, goodbye, ladies and gentlemen.